I'm Mark Sisman. I'm the president of Healthy Neighborhoods. Uh, I am one of probably a dozen partners who helped put together the things for that house. And uh, we're really thrilled to be in Reservoir Hill. It's a great neighborhood. It's a healthy neighborhood. Uh, that doesn't happen easily. It happens because the neighborhood and a lot, a lot of partners work together to make important things happen. And we're here to do two things today. One is to celebrate all of the progress being made in Reservoir Hill by the neighborhood, by teachers at the school, by people who go to church and synagogue, by homeowners and renters. It's a different neighborhood than five years ago. And we're also here to celebrate the generous and good work of Wells Fargo Bank uh, that is making a major commitment in this neighborhood, <laughs> but also throughout the city. We, we, we've seen around the city hundreds of people, new homeowners, part of those 10,000 new families who are moving to Baltimore because of the vision and generosity and creativity of Wells and Andy Burnaby. So we thank you uh, for that. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about this house and what it represents for the future. Uh, this is a house that was renovated by developer Druid Heights CDC, Kelly Little and Aziz uh, Abdullah. I, I should tell you what, that when Kelly introduced Aziz as his development consultant, I really scratched my head. He was really young. He, he's a little less young now. He has a few gray hairs learning about this. He's really a good developer. And we're looking forward together to use some of what Wells is giving us through the city to rebuild the rest of Callow Avenue. Uh, it's amazing to say, but Reservoir Hill has only two blocks left that are really big issues. They're Callow Avenue, and we're going to jump in with Aziz and Kelly and the Neighborhood Association and Paul Graziano, and we're going to acquire 20-some units. We're going to get them built. We're going to get them sold to homeowners, uh, just as we did here. And so if, if you haven't walked through this wonderful house, which is still for sale, uh, there are other great houses on this block. Uh, as well that we help finance and get done without NSP money. But this is, this is a destination community. When we see people who come to us about living in the city, they want to live in Reservoir Hill. They want to live in Reservoir Hill because of the great houses, because of all the assets in the neighborhood. We're going to walk up the street with the mayor, hopefully, and see some urban farms and parks. And uh, they want to live here because it's a high quality neighborhood. And that's what we aspire to for all of Baltimore. And we're getting there little by little, house by house. Uh, not a lot of magic. It's money and houses and energy and community engagement. So th this is a great day. The sun is out. The sun is always out in Baltimore. Uh, we want to thank the mayor for agreeing to be here. Uh, I, I have the pleasure of introducing Andy Bertamini, who's I, rabbi. I accept Claire told me I don't have the pleasure. Uh, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, I. I I've gotten to know Rabbi Daniel Berg since he moved to Baltimore. He's not only been a, a great rabbi at Beth Am, but he's been a terrific community leader. From, you know, from day one, he stepped into the neighborhood, got to know people, uh, put his energy and Miriam's energy, his wife, into the community. Not, was it a year ago? We, a year and a half ago when Lake the Ravens Rabbit. Park was built. Uh, he, he was there not only turning out people, and Miriam was there giving out ice cream pops, and we were all there hauling mulch. He's a little younger than I am. His bank back did better than I did. But it's really, he's really been a great asset in a wonderful community. And Daniel, you're going to uh, do a blessing for us, yes? I think Dick Cass was hauling most of the mulch, actually, that day. But we were all doing our part. It was a great day, and there have been many uh, great days since then. That it's really uh, an honor to be here today. I want to share a story with you. The story is a Hasidic story about a rabbi who would carry around two pieces of paper in his pockets, one in each pocket. And on one piece of paper it said, the world was created for my sake. And on the other piece of paper it said, the line from Genesis, I am only dust and ashes. 
And when he was feeling a little haughty, a little full of himself, a little bit like he could go it alone in the world, he would take out the piece of paper that said, I am but dust and ashes. And that would remind him that in fact he wasn't alone in the world and that he couldn't do everything himself. And when he was feeling a little lo lowly, a little sad, a little distraught, he would take out the other piece of paper that said the world was created for my sake and it would remind him that in fact he had infinite possibilities, he was able to do great things. And keeping those two pieces of papers in tension is the way I want to suggest to you to lead a balanced life. We are here today to celebrate collaboration. We're here to celebrate partnership partnership with Wells Fargo, partnership with Reservoir Hill Improvement Council, partnership certainly with Healthy Neighborhoods, Inc., partnership with the Mayor's Office and City Council. This is a collaborative effort of so many, the Baltimore Community Foundation, who have come together and helped us arrive at this incredibly sacred and important moment. None of us can do this alone. And so my blessing for us is the following. God, please help us to remember that we are great, that we can achieve great things, that we have achieved great things in this neighborhood of Reservoir Hill, which is my neighborhood and where I make my home and where I serve Beth Am Synagogue, and help us to remember that we can always continue to achieve great things. And give us the humility to remember that none of us can do it alone, that it's always going to take being able to look to each other, to hold each other up, and to move forward together as one city of Baltimore toward the greater good, and I am experiencing that greater good every day living here in Reservoir Hill. Thank you very much, and God bless each one. Thank you, Rabbi. My pleasure to introduce Andy Bertomini, who's the regional president of Wells Fargo Bank. Uh, Andy is a leader. He's a banker. He understands that leader bankers help bring resources to cities. Uh, he's done that in neighborhood work. Uh, Andy serves on the Healthy Neighborhoods Board. Uh, he has taken a lead on the Journey Home uh, event for the homeless this weekend. That's going to raise a great number, a great amount of money for to serve homeless families in Baltimore. Uh, he, he's a leader in youth works and supports youth works. The mayor prompts me, uh, but mostly he knows Baltimore, cares about it, uh, cares about neighborhoods. We, he just walked into this wonderful house and said, "I know another banker that ought to be able to help us. Will you meet?" And that's the kind of leadership that matters. Uh, he's done an unbelievable amount of good in Baltimore in the last year that we've seen. Andy, it's, I'm really pleased that you're here today to see our good work. And your good work. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. And, you know, the one thing about Baltimore, I hope that you feel the same thing that I feel, that there seems to be a spirit of momentum in Baltimore right now. And that really comes from having great leadership, a mayor with a vision, her 10,000 in 10 years, great, great leadership behind her, our great uh, housing commissioner, Graziano, Ken, who was great to work with, with the City Lift campaign, and then great partners, nonprofit, all of you community partners are so important, and we're glad that we can support many of you, as well as the faith-based community. So this is just one more. Great things happen when people work together, and I'm just very humbled that we can be a part of this, as, many, as well as many other activities in the city. Thank you for all your good work. We partner with neighbors. We don't do anything unless a neighborhood invites us in and a neighborhood says it's okay to renovate a house or sell it. And we've had a, a wonderful relationship with the Reservoir Hill Improvement Council. Not everybody always has said that, okay? But RHIC has a vision for the community. It's a vision not only of home ownership, but of rental. It's a vision about historic houses. It engages an awful lot of people. Uh, and we're fortunate that they've been a partner. And uh, they, they've asked, uh, Ms. Courtney Beadle, who's a Reservoir Hill resident, uh, to speak on behalf of the community. Hi, great. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really beautiful out here today and a great day to celebrate the great work that's happening in Reservoir Hill. Uh, my name is Courtney Bettle, and I am a proud homeowner and a member of the Reservoir Hill Improvement Council Board of Directors. Um, 
my husband and I actually bought our house in Reservoir Hill um, in April of 2012 um, with the help of a city incentive uh, that for city residents and uh, city employees who want to live in healthy neighborhoods. And uh, with the great help of our housing um, support at Wells Fargo Bank, we were able to purchase our home um, on Brooks Lane, get really involved in the community um, and thrive here. Um, and when we moved in, we knew that we were moving into a great community um, and into a great neighborhood. Um, but got to learn a lot about the wonderful work the Reservoir Hill Improvement Council has done over the last 10 years, um, from building an, over, uh, an urban farm with the help of Res um, Reservoir Hill residents, um, increasing the tree canopy by over 300 trees, um, creating green spaces and playgrounds for the kids, um, achieving green school status um, at Johnny Gur Howard Elementary School, um, and working with other city agencies um, other advocacy groups to help win the funding to modernize all city school buildings in Baltimore City. Um, so we're really excited to be here. We're really thankful to um, our partners. We can't do this partnership or do this work alone without the work of great partners. Um, and so we're thankful to Healthy Neighborhoods for their longstanding partnership um, in Reservoir Hill. Um, they've provided over $150,000 to our neighborhood to support different um, block improvement um, projects. Um, over $15 million has come to Reservoir Hill um, through na healthy neighborhoods in the last several years. And so we're really thankful um, for their continued investment and support of uh, the work that's going on in the community. And we're looking forward to our continued work with you. Thank you. Well, it's great to see you in Reservoir Hill. Let's sit down. Uh, I get to introduce the mayor. Mayor Rollins Blake is my friend, long to longer than I want to remember. Uh, Don't make it sound too long. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry for you. I, I've, I've been thinking about those things lately. Uh, y your daughter's this tall, mine's like that. Uh, when I think of Mayor Rollins Blake, I think of neighborhoods, I think of schools and the change. I know she was here yesterday to talk about the great new school uh, at Trani. Uh, I think about the senior people, uh, Paul Graziano and his team, uh, you know, it, you know, it gets, comes together when the mayor says get it done. And this neighborhood is the beneficiary of all those things, of bringing Wells Fargo here to do this kind of work. It could have been anywhere, but they're here. Uh, you know, that we've been a beneficiary of all of that leadership, all of that vision, and the same story is true in 40 neighborhoods for us around the city. In, in, in every neighborhood, in one way or another, but usually 10 or 15, there's something very special going on that the city is at the heart of. So I want to thank you. Uh, and I want to thank you for George Nielsen, whose vision and energy and leadership really helped us in making this happen today. So uh, with no more of that, Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so very much. I was, as I was coming over here, Mark, I was thinking about how long we've known each other too. And I, I as soon as it, I started tallying up the years, that I immediately stopped thinking about how long that that has been. But I just am so pleased when I think about some of the early conversations we had about healthy neighborhoods and what was possible, and to think about that conversation and where we are now, I think we, we have a lot to be proud of. And I also want to thank uh, Councilman Nick Mosby for being here. He was with, with me uh, yesterday at John Eager Howard with the kids that are so talented. They sang us their uh, Eager Beavers song. And I was just blown away by uh, their enthusiasm about school, but also about the future of their schools uh, as made possible by the more than $1.1 billion in new school investment that will be coming to Baltimore. I want to thank the Reservoir Hill Improvement Association, Druid Heights CDC. I want to thank uh, my city solicitor. And I'm just putting you on notice after I speak, I, I am going to call up uh, the housing commissioner, point of personal privilege, because I want him to, to talk a little bit about some of the work that we're doing in this area. Again, I want to thank uh, the city solicitor. I want to thank Andy uh, Bertamini. And I, I just want to say it's a, a, something about Andy and the work that he does in his, his, his tie. I thought he was going to talk about his tie. I was like, oh. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's nice, but, um, but so uh, growing up in Baltimore, you, 
I think it's it's easy for us to be uh, wistful and nostalgic about leaders of the past without a full appreciation of the next generation of uh, of business leaders, and. Um, I th we've had incredible, incredibly generous business leaders in Baltimore's history that understood that in order for them to be successful in business, they, they had to be successful. Their entity had to be successful, but also the city uh, had to be successful. And I can think of no stronger representative of that in present day than Andy Bertamini. He has been an incredible partner to my administration. Um, when you ask him, you know, how can we work together to make things happen, um, you know, he's the answer is yes, and then he's on to figuring out how to make it the best possible. You know, his commitment to youth works is outstanding. Making sure that we are developing the next um, ge next generation of Baltimore's workforce. His enthusiastic support of our efforts to make homelessness rare and brief. I, yeah, I could not be more grateful uh, for your leadership and your, and your commitment uh, to the city. And I'm looking forward to the one time of year that I'm almost guaranteed that I will see Andy Bernamini dance, and that is at the <laughs> Journey Home uh, Gala on on Saturday. And I and I can say I was, you know, on top of all the other accolades, I can add to that he he does have some moves. <laughs> Not like I used to. I get tired quickly. Well, it doesn't show. It doesn't show. So, so last summer, uh, Wells Fargo Bank of Baltimore entered into an agreement to help hundreds of families purchase homes here in in Baltimore. And um, the agreement was known as City Lift. It totaled four point five million dollars and provided fifteen thousand dollars in home buying assistance to three hundred families. And the agreement also provided a one million dollar investment in neighborhoods impacted by the national housing and foreclosure crisis. A key goal of my administration is to continue growing Baltimore by attracting new residents to our uh, city and revitalizing communities that have been long ignored and neglected. The partnership was a vital co uh, component of that multifaceted strategy to grow Baltimore. One third of the Wells Fargo City Lift families uh, buy homes, those, uh, a third of those City Lift families are new to the city, which is very, very important. We can. So thank you for helping me to reach that goal. For me, that's a tremendous return on the investment, and it shows that Baltimore, with, with a little assistance, it shows all of us that, that with a little assistance, a little incentive, people, families, great families like the, I wonder, I, it's not Beatles, it's Betel. Betel. Like the <laughs> Bettles are coming to Baltimore. And coming to Baltimore and, and, and settling into neighborhoods, uh, beautiful neighborhoods like Reservoir Hill with a spirit to continue to grow and help that uh, neighborhood thrive. And it shows you know, people who, you know, some people just want to buy a house, you know, at the end of the night, after work, go in, close the door, and call it a day. That's not what Baltimoreans are about. You know, this is, we, we are a city of neighborhoods, unique neighborhoods where communities come together, even in the worst of times. I see it so much, you know, I, I hate to say the word snow, but you see it when we have the, the uh, storms and people come together, caring for their neighbors, doing, you know, doing things, make, checking on the elderly. That's what we do. We're a caring, caring community. And when we give those incentives and we're giving new people opportunity to get in on what's so special about Baltimore, it really, really makes me uh, proud and I'm so glad uh, that with the housing assistance uh, incentive that uh, you were able to make Reservoir Hill, you and your husband were able to make Reservoir Hill your home. It, I mean, that's for me what it's all about. So today we've reached another milestone in our efforts and we're pleased to announce that $750,000 will be going to healthy neighborhoods for renovations of homes in and around the city, homes just like the one behind me at 2228 Linden Avenue. These funds and the whole Healthy Neighborhoods approach are wonderful components to my Vegas to Value initiative. The initiative is now approaching its third anniversary. Can you believe it, Julie? Almost three years old. Uh, and we, we couldn't be prouder of the progress and the positive changes it's made in the city. This house, this community, these partners really reflect the best of what happens when we come together. And it, the, the, the partnership reflects the uh, principles of healthy neighborhoods, building home ownership assets, homeowner assets, focusing on neighborhood markets, targeting measurable outcomes, valuing neighborhoods as partners, and forging partnerships among lenders, 
uh, and the philanthrop uh, philanthropic community and neighborhoods. This is what Healthy Neighborhoods is all about. Your dedication to Baltimore has helped to put these principles in action on a large uh, scale and are producing real results for communities. Baltimore is lucky and blessed to have uh, Healthy Neighborhoods and all of Healthy Neighborhoods community partners um, on board to help us to grow Baltimore. And I look forward to our continuing partnership. I'm looking forward to making sure that we are doing everything we can to attract new residents and also giving residents that want, want an opportunity to move up and to grow within Baltimore. Because um, this is also a retention strategy that they have that same uh, option too. So I, you know, for me, I do, Andy, I do feel the, the momentum. It makes me excited when I get to, to see the, the, the types of people that we're in, uh, engaging in Baltimore, it makes me inside excited about the, the great things that are uh, coming down the, way, the road. With that, for just a brief remarks, I couldn't make uh, this happen without the, the leadership of uh, my housing commissioner. Um, so I talked about vacancy value very briefly, and one of the things, you know, in celebrating this uh, third uh, anniversary of vacancy value, it's really a testament to his leadership and, and his vision. When I became mayor, I, we were, the, the idea of a land bank was tossed around about creating this quasi-government entity to uh, help Baltimore with its uh, blight problems. And I, I told him then when it was being discussed and, and when I became mayor, I said, you're smart, you got smart people over there, and if you don't, get them. And if they're not, you know, and if, if they're not helping us in this fight, get rid of them. But we have enough talent in housing to figure out a way to create a, a blight elimination plan that speaks to Baltimore's needs, that can help us to grow our city, to, that shows, to, to show neighborhoods that have been neglected and uh, so disappointed for decades that we're here, that we want to be in partnership and there are better times coming. And that's what Vacancy Values uh, is. And I'm, I'm so glad that we're approaching this uh, successful third anniversary. It's been nationally recognized as a model for uh, urban redevelopment. And I'm very proud to bring up my housing commissioner, Paul Graziano. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Madam Mayor. And uh, that's a perfect segue because I'm actually a little jet lagged. I just got back late last night from San Francisco and we were uh, invited out there for an awards uh, uh, event. The uh, Financial Times of London has actually uh, designated the Vacants to Value program as one of their four finalists. The final uh, uh, will be announced in New York later this year uh, for North America and the Caribbean. So the entirety of North America and the Caribbean. So I just went out to San Francisco, a beautiful awards dinner. And um, this program is now internationally recognized, Madam Mayor. So we're very, very, very proud of that. Uh, and, and what's really important to keep in mind about Vacants to Value, it's, it's an overarching structure. It's, it's a set of principles, and it's, uh, it's a, ser a series of collaborations. And, and, and there's so many actors. Obviously, the, uh, couldn't do any of it without the mayor's leadership and my team. Uh, Julie's out there, Ken's out there somewhere, uh, right there right in front of me. I tell you, I'm a little jet lag here. Uh, and uh, the, the, the community partners, we've got so many of those here uh, in Res Hill, but I see folks from other communities have joined us here. And partners like uh, Healthy Neighborhoods. Uh, and what we've tried to do in the foundation world and the banks, obviously, uh, Andy, you've been terrific. Uh, we pull all these pieces together uh, and, and look at, look at this as a whole, and the whole is so much greater than the, than the sum of the parts, and we're doing all this in an environment, and I don't have to remind the mayor, where there's so, so far fewer uh, resources coming out of Washington, at least they're now reopened the government, that's a good thing, but uh, <laughs> there just aren't a lot of dollars flowing to the cities, so we have to come up with ways to work with our partners here uh, to, to get it done without uh, what was traditionally the source of so much uh, assistance, which is the federal government. So I'm very, very proud of what we're doing here in Res Hill as a group. Um, and, and it's not finished. It's not finished. Uh, uh, we're, we're, um, Mark and I have had uh, uh, many discussions in recent weeks uh, about uh, uh, what we're going to do uh, to finish off Callow Avenue. Uh, 
Um, and uh, um, we, are, we haven't forgotten about Madison Park North. Now, for those who think that, uh, that that's uh, something that we've given up on, we have not. And, and one day, we're going to have a brand new school at John Eager Howard. And right across the street, we're going to have a brand new P Madison Park North. And what, uh, what, I, what I am also very happy about is the connection between this community and the community immediately to the south, and I happen to live just a few blocks from here uh, uh, in Bolton Hill, and, and uh, uh, I see uh, Charlie Duff here and the wonderful work that we've done with the Choice Neighborhoods Initiative, and we put a very, very exciting proposal into HUD uh, to deal with the whole Utah corridor going south. Um, so all these pieces come together. We are here in the center of, the, of this city. Uh, this is the, the heart of the city, and uh, like a parent, you know, you, we love all our children, but we're here in the middle right now. I know the mayor loves all her children here, uh, all our neighborhoods, but w these all come together right here in the center, and there's so many exciting things happening here, and it's so clear, you know, we're so close to the train station and so forth, uh, that it's a real magnet for folks who uh, want to come back and live in the city. So, Mayor, this is the prescription, I believe, for growing the city, as you have uh, uh, stated that we will. And it is happening. Thank so thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. I, I want to help Paul and remind all of you to see how all this comes together. Paul and Julie may remember that about 10 years ago, you had the Linden Tree Group yes. that bought Prairie Vacants the value that they bought eight vacant houses on Linden Avenue to renovate and move into. Uh, after the fact, we came along with a loan pool that lent them probably $4 million to, in ways that no one else would to get their houses renovated all on this block. Uh, because Paul had the visionary vision to sell them one at a time to that group of people, if you walk up the street, you'll see one of the best urban farms in Baltimore on what was a formerly city-owned piece of ground where where young and old and rich and poor and everybody else in this neighborhood get together and grow things and it's, it's a place where everyone joins together. Yep. If you look just a little bit to the north of that, you'll see what was German Park, which is now, we call it Ravens Park, where the Ravens said, we want to do something important in the city. They picked Reservoir Hill and uh, RHIC and all sorts of other communities pulled about 300 people to haul mulch and and if you drive past it, it's a great conditioned new park with kids playing in it. It's exactly what a good neighborhood ought to be. To the left of that is what was the Gertrude Stein House, sitting vacant for a long, long time. And we were fortunate to get some federal money and we gave the Women's Housing Coalition a million six hundred thousand dollars to renovate it. Kelly Little bought it. Uh, and it now houses five formerly homeless women and kids. And we're so proud of that, and we preserve an important building. And north of there, where there are a couple of housing authority, long vacant buildings. They're not vacant any longer, because the housing department in the city understood how important getting the last vacant stone was. And so in the aggregate, that cleaned up all of Linden Avenue. I hope you will get to walk it from the new school that will be built all the way up to Druid Hill Park. What an exciting way to make a neighborhood better. And it's because of all the partnerships that all of you have been a part of. It's duplicated all over the country. Uh, it's great that Wells Fargo is a big, active, committed partner in the city and in neighborhoods, and we're lucky to do it. So come look at this wonderful house that's for, for sale uh, that was developed by one of our partners, Ruin Heights. Uh, come visit the garden and the park and Stein House and look at the vacants. It's all about neighborhoods, and it's all about partnership. And Mayor, we thank you for being here. Thank you.